Hello everyone and welcome to this latest tutorial and this tutorial is a match day image tutorial uh, very simple to do so it's aimed at beginners so if you are more advanced um, please watch along if you want to learn some new techniques uh, for something you're unsure of but um, yeah it's aimed uh, more at beginners so without further ado I'm going to start going into it so with the SPL starting on Saturday after a long layoff and the Premier League coming to an end and then it's going to be restarting in a few weeks um, Match day images are quite popular on social media, so that's what I thought I would cover today. Uh, one question I do get asked quite a lot is where do I get my inspiration from? And the answer is Pinterest. Uh, so as you can see here on Pinterest, um, I've come across this image. Um, I'm not sure who's made it, uh, but it's been uploaded here by this person. Um, again, if you've got a Pinterest account, just go on there and there's, uh, there's absolutely loads and loads of stuff. Um, and loads of uh, ideas so that's something to consider for uh, inspiration if you want to try and uh, make something in Photoshop but without further ado I'm going to get straight into it so I'm going to press command N because I'm working on a Mac or you can press control N if you're working on Windows and I'm working off 1200 pixels by 1600 pixels resolution 300 pixels per inch RGB color 8-bit and a white background and I'm going to click OK and I'm just going to drag and drop that down there First thing I'm going to do is then I'm going to drop in uh, Dominic Carver-Lewin and I'm just going to drop him in just here and I'm just going to resize him up and something like that and I'm going to hit enter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select I on my eyedropper tool and I'm going to select a nice dark area, nice dark colour. Um, I have used a previous colour before. We'll try this colour in fact from what I selected before. So 1A2235. 1A2235 and click OK. Because it's at the uh, forefront of my colour palette, I'm going to press Alt and Backspace. Make sure I've got, sorry, make sure I've got this uh, blank layer selected, Alt and Backspace, and it's going to fill it nicely. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the ripped paper effect. So I'm just going to go through my stock images. And these will be in the link below. And we'll just have a look, see what this one looks like go for this one I'm just going to drag and drop it in and then I'm just going to angle it roughly something like that it's going to be hidden press enter okay now it's selected I'm going to press command J to duplicate it hit V on my keyboard for my move tool I'm just going to drag the next layer down and something like that command T or control T if you're on Windows going to put it somewhere like that that's okay okay they look fantastic next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my rectangle tool okay if you can't see it hit you on your keyboard hold it down and you'll see rectangle tool pop up there and I'm just going to make a rectangle close that now I'm going to make sure shape selected and the fill is white no stroke okay and I'm going to press command T transform tool or control T and we're just going to plug those gaps like that. Okay, hit V on my keyboard and I'm going to close that work path down. There we go. Okay, so take the rectangle shape, hold shift down and uh, hold the bottom, hold it down, sorry, and select the bottom one so all three get selected. Okay, I'm going to right click or double click if you're on Mac. I'm going to convert that to a smart object and it makes it into one layer and you can see we've transformed it there. So we've got our background layer, the blue, we've got our ripped uh, white. And we've got Dominic Calvin Lewin. Okay, next so I'm going to take Dominic Calvin Lewin. I'm going to press Command J to duplicate him, or you can just drag him on down onto this little icon at the bottom. Okay, and that duplicates him. But the bottom layer there, okay, I'm going to select it. I'm going to convert it to a smart object. So again, smart object just means in layman's terms that we can edit them. I'm going to go to Image Adjustments, Hue slash Saturation, select Lightness. Now I'm just typing it in here minus 100. Okay, you can drag it, but my Photoshop crashes for some reason. Um, and I'm going to click OK. So to get rid of the top layer, we can see um, it's nice and black underneath. And I'm just going to use my keys on my keyboard tool to nudge him. Nudge him out a little bit. We'll go for something like that for just now. Okay, I'm going to go to... Um, 
filter, sorry, blur and Gaussian blur. Okay, and I went for a radius of 20 pixels. And click OK, and you can see there how it's blurred it. And I'm going to drop the opacity down to around. I want something to stand out. We'll go for 40%. And I'm just going to keep it on normal. Okay, and you can use your, your keys just to move him down again. So, yeah, looking fantastic. Now, what we can do as well, select this top copy of Dominic Calvert Lewin. Okay, go to adjustments and go to curves. We'll go to curves. Okay. So let this little icon here, this is a clipping mask, and uh, this means it will only work on the layer directly below it, which is Dominic Carver Lewin. Okay, and I'm just going to select the center and just going to drag it down. Just play around with the blacks. I'm just going to give him a bit of um, how can it glaze? I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Again, it's entirely up to you how you want it to look, but I'm just going to go for something like that. So you can see the difference there. We're just crushing those um, those darks, those blacks there a little bit. I'm going to close that. So you can see there, I've clipped it, and it's only affecting the layer underneath. Select them again, okay, and we can go to Vibrance Layer, and we can just drop the Vibrance down a little bit, say minus 20, something along those lines. Okay, looking fantastic. Uh, next, we're going to add the Match Day. So... I'm going to create a new layer just to make things easier. I'm going to hit T on my text tool. Okay, I've got Babas New. If you follow my Photoshop tutorials, okay, you should already have this one. If not, the link will be in the description below. And I'm just going to make it about 40 for now. And the color I'm going to select is black. Okay. And I'm just going to type match date. Okay. And I'm going to press Command A or Control A. I'm just going to make that bigger and okay. I'm going to press Command T to bring up the uh, transform tool. Right click and I'm going to rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. There we go. And I'm going to position him somewhere around there. Okay. Hit enter. Hit T on my text tool again. Hold over the text and press Command A. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the character tool. If you can't see that, go to window at the top, okay, and just select it there and it should pop up. Okay, I'm going to go to character, okay, and you can play around with it. So the size there, you can see I've enlarged it from the previous tutorial, so I'm going to drop that down back to 100. And let me just zoom in and move it across and zoom out. Just play around with it. And the gap between the letters I'm just going to crush a little bit and the spacing like the fatness of the letters I'm just going to increase okay and you can play around with this um, until there's something that you like and then again I'll go for 10 go for minus 10 go for minus 30 and then increase it and 25 then the size I'm gonna go for something like that okay so that's looking good okay what I want is I want it to be white though so again I'm gonna press command A to highlight it and select my color at the top I'm gonna to select white there and click OK now obviously it's over the top of him so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press command J and I'm gonna drag and drop the copy below Dominic Calvert Lewin, so that uh, just in there, in between the shadow. Now, if you take away the top layer, you can see it's hidden uh, hidden behind. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Command, I'm going to select both layers, I'm going to press Command T, I'm just going to nudge them up and come in slightly and hit Enter. Okay, so apologise for that one. Right, so we've got the top layer. And we've got the bottom layer. So the bottom layer is underneath, so now the top layer. Select this top layer, okay? And with the fill, reduce the fill down to zero. And you notice it disappears. Now we're going to go for the layer style. So just double click in the gap there. And we're going to go for strokes. Stroke is the bit all the way around the outside. I'm going to reduce the size to one, one pixel. And I'm going to select inside. 
and normal opacity 100 and the colors white I'm going to click OK and now we've got that um, effect of the text over the top of them so you can still read it but it's uh, it's behind uh, fantastic okay so now we're going to add the dotted line but before I do that what I'm going to do is I've got match day image selected there if you've got your rulers on the top if you haven't press command R and that'll bring them in okay I'm going to bring the grid lines down and it should lock on there to the match day now go over to my shape tool again hold down and select the line tool and just for now I'm just going to select white I'm going to hold on this top one, I'm going to hold shift so it remains vertical, I'm going to drag down and I'm going to drop on that bottom line there. Now we want it to be dashed so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this solid line here to that dashed line there. The fill I'm going to get rid of and this is where it gets tricky. The height you want to leave that one alone. The width I've got that on one pixel. Um, but now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play around with the size. And uh, there we go. You can see how we've uh, changed it there. And you can increase it. And that's too much. 12, 10, 8 is too much. 10. We'll go with 10. Press Command 0 there and come out. And press Command H get rid of those lines. And as you can see, we've got a nice line, dash line underneath. Again, totally up to you if you want to uh, include that. Okay, next we're just going to uh, add the lines there. So we're going to hold that down and go back to our rectangle tool. And make sure we've got shape selected, we've got the fill, and we'll go for hmm, select the white. In fact, what we'll do is select this little colour up here, the colour picker, we'll go for a grey. Go for a grey, something like that, A-D-A-C-A-C, -A -A -C. click OK. And make sure you've got no stroke selected. And what I'm simply going to do, just make a nice long line there, something like that. I'm going to hit Enter. Okay, I'm going to press Command J to duplicate it, and I'm just going to use press V on my keyboard to the move tool. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Go for fifteen gaps, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it again. So selected them both, drag down onto the new layer. Command T, use my keys on my keyboard, and then. When I see a little gap there, I'm going to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 15. A little bit too much. Have a little play around with that. Yeah, it's looking good. And then same again. I'm going to hold shift down. And go to my rect bottom of my rectangle. Select the top one, sorry. Hold shift down. Select the bottom rectangle. Command T. And again, no apologies. I've got to uh, duplicate them first. There we go. Then press Command T. And there we go, it's just locked in. I'm going to come across a little bit. And I think that's one line too many, so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is... Uh, top layer, again, select the bottom layer. Command T. I'm going to bring them round at an angle. And... I'm going to go for something like that. Okay, now we want them down. In fact, what we're going to do now, now we're happy with the placement. Okay, you can right click or double click and convert to smart object to make it into one layer. I'm going to drag and drop that down above the shadow. That will do it below the shadow underneath there. Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay, so with the, uh, we'll call those the lines. Okay, we're going to add a layer mask. Okay, I'm going to hit B on my keyboard for the brush tool. I'm going to right click and uh, let's have a look what we've got. I'm sure I had the wet media brush. Kyle's paint box. Okay, these must be um, the 
the flow quite up. Let me just check again. Okay, it's jumping between them, so one sec. There we go. I've gone onto the uh, dry media brush. Cow's Ultimate Pastel. Just pick, uh, there we go. What I'm going to do, just got the, f I can release the flow down, just have a little play around. Try and get rid of those harsh lines at the bottom. Just want it to blend in a little bit. We can also reduce the opacity down a little bit. Just something just to uh, press Command Z if you do it too much, like I just did there. And again, just get rid of the top. Okay, yeah, that looks okay. Again, just play around. That was with a pre-installed brush. Uh, nothing too crazy. And then to finish it off, uh, you can add some logos in there. Uh, so let's have a look. Shape ones there, yeah. So I'm just going to and we'll drag Everton in there. Okay, I'm going to hold the hold down and decrease the size. And again, a little bit small. And who can they be playing? Um, Arsenal. Doesn't really matter who does it. <laughs> I think the uh, one I made previous that's on my Instagram is a Liverpool logo. And we'll go for something like that. Okay, what you can do is as well, select your Everton logo, drag your lines down. Okay, and you can see there, it's not quite too big. And just increase it there to it's in the lines. So um, nice and smart, and you can get rid of those if you want. Command H. Okay, yeah, and then uh, just the text tool again. Okay, Babas new again. Um, lower that size right down, start with 12. Make sure you've got a decent colour they can see. Everton, the Arsenal, Command A. I'm just going to reduce that size there. And again, if you want it to look really smart, OK, select the Everton logo. Draw in a line from the left again and onto the Arsenal logo. And hit T on your text tool, hit that layer again. And it, <laughs> that was looking pretty good uh, straight away. Um, you can size it up with the line so it's nice and symmetrical. And then you can fill in the rest of the details uh, for match day image, location, time, kickoff, any uh, sort of hashtag. So command zero there. And then to finish it off again, going to go up to here, going to go to levels. Okay, I'm just going to drag across, make it dark, darker, and then this slider here gives it that fade look, which is quite popular, and just play around. I'll leave that one. And there we go, there is our match day image, um, ready for the new season that's starting in a few weeks. I uh, hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Something nice and simple, um, something for you to try, playing around with the text, uh, different looks, different styles. Again, I'd encourage you to go onto Pinterest and check it out for uh, a lot of inspiration. So thanks for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button. If this is the first time you're watching my uh, channel, please consider subscribing and uh, checking out the rest of the videos. I do like to uh, do sports media. Uh, however, sometimes I've dabbled and a little bit of sci-fi as well. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.